Welcome to our online course, Rebuilding a Blue Economy Post-COVID-19. New Challenges, Recovery Measures, and Resilience. I'm Abut Jumbe, your course director for the UNIDAP. Module 3. The Blue Economy is a Post-COVID-19 Recovery Pathway. COVID-19 pandemic is crippling the global economy, affecting people's lives and sustainable development. COVID-19 has induced converging challenges of global security, climate change, economic and financial crisis. The post-COVID-19 resilience and recovery for a vibrant blue economy will depend on a different approach to local, national, regional, and multilateral development cooperation. Hence, there's a valid reason to place in focus the blue economy and blue growth in a new development perspective in the post-COVID-19 era. The blue economy recovery will require corrective measures combined with adequate resources to address challenges of adaptation and mitigation and navigate safely out of this pandemic. This module therefore discusses the impacts and opportunities of the key blue economy sectors such as fisheries, tourism, maritime transport and energy. COVID-19 and the African context. By mid-November 2020, the number of COVID-19 cases in the WHO African region reached 2 million with over 48,000 deaths. The African economic growth is forecast to fall between minus 2.1% and minus 5.1% in 2020, down from a modest 2.4% in 2019 before the pandemic began. The public debt levels and debt risks are also rising, jeopardizing debt sustainability in some countries. A full lockdown across Africa had cost the continent about 2.5% of its annual GDP, or equivalent to about 65.7 billion US dollars per month. As countries are now reopening, Long-term impacts as a result of these tactical decisions to protect the African population from COVID-19 are yet to be fully resolved. The impact of COVID-19 on the African economies. So the average GDP growth rates in terms of percentage between 2014 and 2020 in Africa was ranging around 3.2%. When the pandemic hit Africa, the economic performance has dropped to about minus 0.3% in Africa as opposed to minus 3.0% at the world level. Impact of COVID-19 on major economies in Africa. The pre-COVID-19 economic performance for Africa shows that fisheries exports rose by 5.7% in Africa, while the African port traffic rose by 4%. Travel and tourism industry expanded by 5.6%. The post-COVID-19 economic performance shows a negative impact on fisheries, shipping and transport, and travel and tourism. It is very important to note that the impacts of COVID-19 were also accelerated by the cumulative impacts of climate change and extreme floods and the desert locusts. Building back better. In an African context, any blue recovery measures must correspond to the 2030 Agenda, African Union Agenda 2063, Africa Integrated Maritime Strategy 2050, 
and the recent African Union Africa Blue Economy Strategy. The sustainable management of blue economy is therefore essential for achieving sustainable development goals, including sustainable development goal number 14 on conserving and sustainably use the oceans, seas, and marine resources. The key focus areas in building back better include tourism and travel, fisheries and aquaculture, maritime transport and trade, renewable energy, and oil and gas. COVID-19 and tourism. Tourism within a blue economy approach reflects the sustainable development principles while aiming at a model that can support local economies and reduce poverty. Tourism accounts for 8.5% of Africa's GDP. The continent received around 5% of the estimated 1.4 billion international tourist arrivals in 2018. Recent forecasts showed 2020 global international tourist arrivals to decline to at least 20-30% as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The decline in tourism is having a disproportionate effect on African small island developing states, seeds, and many coastal states for which tourism constitutes a larger part of the economy. challenges of a blue recovery. There are a number of vulnerabilities that should be overcome if tourism and travel sectors are to recover to their full potential as part of the blue recovery strategy. These challenges include inadequate institutional capacity to guide sustainable tourism growth, general lack of coordinated development plans, lack of development and maintenance of tourism-related physical infrastructure, inadequate funding for development, management, and marketing of tourism, weak regulatory frameworks, investment in climate and insecurity, and the impacts of climate change and environmental degradation. Opportunities towards blue recovery. A summary of recommendations to enable countries to maximize potential opportunities the tourism sector might bring includes creating a framework to guide the planning, development, and management of sustainable tourism within the principles of blue economy, establishing adequate institutional capacity and governance for sustainable tourism management, improving regional physical infrastructure and tourism amenities, develop innovative financing models for tourism development, management, and marketing, ensuring harmonization of all legislations at the national level relevant to the sustainability of tourism, establishing regulatory frameworks to protect tourism resources, and ensuring tourism contributes to local economic benefits while engaging all stakeholders. COVID-19 and maritime transport sea trade. Studies prior to COVID-19 had projected that throughput in African seaports would rise from 265 million tons in 2009 to more than 2 billion tons in 2040. COVID-19 impact on the maritime and logistics sector in the African countries shows a decline of container vessels by about 10 to 15 percent. At one point of the pandemic, about 45 percent of the African seaports reported the number of container vessel calls falling by 5 to 25 percent compared to a normal situation. This was due to loss by volume of container liners, disrupted shipping patterns and cancellations, port restrictions and closures, disrupted imports, exports, trade and services, and concerns about the health and safety of seafarers and passengers. All these contributed to the collapse of the maritime sector. Constraints to us the blue recovery. Even though severely affected by the pandemic, maritime transport sector may rebound quicker than other blue economy sectors as cargo continues to flow. These constraints include 
environmental aspects of port development and shipping that require attention, climate-related ship-based emissions, threats and coastal and marine ecosystems, marine spills and wastes, piracy and regional maritime security. Opportunities towards the maritime recovery. The following recommendations for the sector towards blue recovery emerge. Ensuring all new port and shipping developments are socially inclusive and environmentally sustainable. Strengthening of maritime administrations, including national maritime business plans, as well as national and regional maritime security strategies. Training and promotion of maritime subjects in academic institutions. Capacity building and efficiency in the maritime sector. Ratifying and implementing maritime transport conventions private sector participation in the maritime sector, and inland waterways including navigable rivers should be integrated into national transportation plans. Fisheries and Aquaculture Each stage of the fisheries and aquaculture value chain has been disrupted by the impacts of COVID-19. The global industrial fishing activity had fallen by about 6.5% at the end of April 2020. Limited supplies such as ice, fuel, gear and bait and labor shortages have also had a severe impact on fishing activities. Impacts on aquaculture including supplies and availability of labor have affected species, markets and financial capacity of farms. Global survey carried out by FAO showed a disruption in monitoring, control and surveillance, combating illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing, and in the implementation of marine scientific work. With respect to the demand, supply and price of fisheries products, the assessment showed negative demand for exports in both capture fisheries and aquaculture sectors. Overall, fishing activities have decreased in both artisanal and industrial sectors during the height of the pandemic. Constraints towards blue recovery. The prevalent challenges slowing post-COVID-19 recovery measures in fisheries include weak or ineffective institutional and legal frameworks on sustainable fisheries low institutional capacity, weak sector governance, and insufficient training and baseline knowledge on fisheries, lack of fish processing infrastructure and services, lack of cross-sectoral coordination and volatility of global fisheries market, increasing fishery pressure due to overfishing and community relations, insufficient monitoring, control, and surveillance systems due to weak enforcement and human resource capacity, large-scale IUU fishing, transnational maritime and marine crimes, and a lack of adequate data on total extraction of marine living resources, marine ecosystems, and marine economics. Opportunities towards blue recovery. There are opportunities that can be factored in towards the blue recovery measures in fisheries. And these include small-scale fisheries should be promoted to ensure more social inclusion in the sector. Governance structures should be responsive to the welfare function of fisheries. Cooperation with the private sector should be actively sought to ensure public-private partnerships. Strengthening of regional fisheries bodies, national fisheries management agencies, and fishing communities. Harmonize regional fisheries policies and legislations to manage shared or transboundary resources. Partnership are crucial for ocean protection, combating IUU, and enforcing MCS, including support to community development. Climate change adaptation and promotion of blue carbon projects. Marine protected areas should be further implemented and adequately enforced. COVID-19 and energy. Global assessment of the potential of ocean energy indicates that by 2050, 
10% of global electricity production will come from ocean energy sources. This should stimulate interest in the long-term potential of deep sea and ocean energy in Africa. In addition, ocean energy technologies are improving and being added to, while interest in ocean energy on the back of technology advances is growing. Prior to COVID-19 pandemic, many African coastal states and seeds were at various levels of exploration and development of ocean sources of energy. Research and studies on renewable ocean energy sources such as offshore wind, wave power, tidal power, ocean current power, ocean thermal energy conversion were ongoing. The impacts of COVID-19 have resulted in a halt in ocean-bound research, reduced mobility, collapsed economies, and realignment of immediate development priorities. Constraints of recovery measures. The blue economy approach to development focuses on the opportunities that marine and deep sea-based natural resources offer to achieve economic transformation in Africa. The potential of various forms of ocean-based renewable energy in the region is significant, but there are constraints mainly related to the following. Limited ocean energy resource mapping and potential power output assessment. The infancy stage of most ocean energy technologies. Current high cost of energy from ocean energy technologies limited awareness about ocean energy and the potential for commercial viability and limited experience with ocean energy development in the region. Opportunities towards blue energy. The policy opportunities and especially another current blue recovery drive can be devised to make better use of ocean energy resources potential including Linking the development of ocean energy with high-value marine economic activities, conducting ocean energy resource potential assessment, and the development of ocean energy integration into strategic planning, improving awareness about the maturity of ocean energy technologies, and scaling up knowledge sharing across the African coastal states and seas, providing incentives such as preferential tariffs, to encourage ocean energy development and promoting private and private public initiatives in ocean energy development investments. COVID-19 and oil and gas development. The COVID-19 impact disrupted the limited production and supply capacity, including mostly offshore exploration activities. Africa is well positioned to benefit from global interest and investments in offshore oil and gas explorations, and especially in the post-COVID era. There are also security concerns and piracy, and the costly rates of mapping the energy resource profile of the ocean flow and seabed. There are also concerns about environmental impacts of deep sea and ocean oil and gas resource development, which are less understood. As a risk of resource scarce, misuse of fiscal revenues, and failure of improving the social benefits for the local communities. Opportunities in oil and gas development. The following policy opportunities can contribute to meeting these challenges in the oil and gas development sector. Improving regional peace and security among the countries and better protection of regional waters, proper demarcation of maritime boundaries, better mapping of ocean and deep sea oil and gas resources in partnership with investors, pursuit of regional cooperation in the joint development of transboundary ocean and sea energy resources, adoption of sovereign wealth funds and appropriate fiscal policies to reduce the risk of corruption and ensure fiscal stability over time and marine environmental impact assessments of offshore resource development, including marine spatial planning.
Submarine cables and blue recovery. Submarine cable networks ensure that data, telecommunication, and power transmission connections are possible. As critical infrastructure, they are essential for the rapid linkage in the global economy. As an emerging sector, Africa needs to enhance its engagement to ensure exchange of technical, environmental, and legal information with the aim of enhancing the sustainability of security of submarine cables. Addressing Climate and Environmental Issues Africa remains at the forefront of the impacts of climate change which could lead to a 15% reduction in GDP in West and East Africa by year 2050. North and Southern Africa could lose as much as 10% of GDP and Central Africa 5% of the GDP. The globally coordinated response to COVID-19 provides a template for climate response for Africa. African countries need to address marine pollution, land-based activities that pollute aquatic systems, marine litter, and fulfill their nationally determined contributions or NDCs to climate action. Debt relief for African countries and innovation in mobilizing private sector financing are also crucial for the desired recovery plan. Better planning and sustainable development is critical in addressing SDG 14 and ocean governance. So in summary, COVID-19 has revealed Africa's high environmental and socio-economic vulnerability levels to global shocks with limited capacity to mitigate and recover, addressing poverty and inequality. The blue economy accounts for about 3.5 to 7 percent of the global GDP. Blue economy sectors such as travel, tourism, maritime transport, fisheries, agriculture have been greatly affected by the impacts of COVID-19. The post-COVID-19 resilience and recovery measures for a vibrant blue economy will depend on a different approach to local, national, regional and multilateral development cooperation, including adequate financing, adaptation and mitigation. In an African context, any blue recovery measures at the global, regional and national scale must correspond to the 2030 Agenda on Sustainable Development, African Union Agenda 2063, Africa Integrated Maritime Strategy 2050, and the African Union Africa Blue Economy Strategy. Thank you.